Okay, how are you leaders and uh, trust you are well tonight. Uh, probably can just unmute and just uh, say hello. Uh, Josephine, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, I trust thank the sun has been well. Yeah, it was well. Yeah. I just come from church. Thank you so much and uh, welcome uh, to cohort 26. Uh, we also have Rose. Uh, Rose, greetings and uh, I know you're just starting the day. How are you? Good morning. I mean, yeah, hello, everybody. Hello and good morning to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's, good, it's good morning to me. I'm just waking up, starting mm. my day. And this is the best place to start it. The group of leaders. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much and uh, welcome. We are set for you as well so to have this conversation. Yeah, uh, Pamba Juma, greetings and how is Mombasa? Yeah, hello. Mombasa is hot, mm -hmm. very hot, uh, but I'm doing fine. I hope everyone is also doing well. Guys, we left uh, last Sunday. Last Sunday, I didn't participate well because I was uh, in my rural area because I had gone for a certain activity. Mm. So uh, in that area, there is less network. That's why. Okay. But I hope to catch you guys because I'm back. Mm. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And uh, I trust you also get some time to just look at the YouTube just to uh, get a grasp of what uh, we discussed in part, those parts that you might have missed out. So uh, I've just spoken to uh, Monica from uh, Malaysia. She's told me she will be joining us later on. Uh, uh, so we expect her to join us as we continue. I had an opportunity to meet with uh, Pastor Leonard from uh, Tanzania this week. Uh, he's in a workshop in Nairobi, and uh, he's traveling today, so he indicated he might be on his way, uh, and therefore he might not be able to join us, but uh, uh, he's uh, very committed and is uh, following the YouTube recording. Uh, so uh, anytime we don't get him, uh, he will always be able to follow through. So... I think I just needed to say that. I've also spoken to Pastor Abel. I think it's a bit a challenge for them being pastors and uh, Sunday being a critical day for them, but they also feel that uh, the other days were a bit tight for them. So they try to be there uh, when uh, possible and also when uh, not possible, they will uh, they committed to uh, follow through the YouTube uh, recording. Uh, otherwise, I also invited Josephine. Uh, Josephine is in cohort 24. I uh, invited her to be with us tonight uh, so that um, we can continue just uh, sharing our different experiences uh, as, as we continue with this discussion. So it's a pleasure, leaders, and uh, we'll just say a prayer. Give thanks to God for this opportunity, for good health that we are able to meet here. We are able to have this conversation. I think it's something to appreciate and recognize God for this. And therefore, allow us just to say thank you to God, and then we'll proceed. Let's pray together. God, we are grateful, and we are happy to have this opportunity. We note that it is by your grace. We note it's by your power. We note it's an opportunity, a privilege that you've given us to be able to meet, um, be able to uh, have a conversation together on how can we uh, lead better, how can we have more impact, how can we transform the people that you have entrusted to us. And therefore, as we continue to share the knowledge, uh, the information, we pray for a deepened understanding. And we also we pray for comprehension. More importantly, we pray for transformation, that this knowledge will transform us first, and then it will help us transform uh, the many people that you have entrusted to us. May you guide our discussion, and uh, we pray this trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So good leaders, and uh, I think we can pick it up from where we left last week. Uh, last week, we really had a very, a very candid talk about um, uh, the triple loop, the, 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 the learning loops. And uh, we also talked about the uh, leaders vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, managers. 
Uh, we concluded with a clip that uh, we watched and it really gave us a very a solid understanding and appreciation of these uh, two functions, how important they are, uh, the management and uh, leadership. And also we really uh, emphasized on the need to have more leaders within our work environment. This week I was talking with someone and uh, uh, she was pointing out that they're having an issue because uh, the HR person, the HR manager, seem not to really uh, have a, a grasp when it comes to issues of um, uh, relationships, when it comes to issues of emotional in intelligence. And uh, she was telling me, if we're having this problem with the HR manager, then what happens across board? Because that is the person that is close to the heart of the people. That is the person that... Um, uh, people are supposed to run to when we're having uh, challenges. Uh, and therefore, uh, uh, actually, we were working on how do we bring this uh, training on board and see uh, if we can be able to help a few people uh, in that organization. So there are a lot of challenges out there with our, within our organizations. And I think as we continue to have more of this conversation, we are able to especially get to the the core of the iceberg. Remember the core of the iceberg? We talked about the tip of the iceberg, and that's where the majority of leaders are, uh, where we uh, 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 leaders probably who are, who are in the position based on the uh, competency, and competency here we refer mostly to hard skills, but uh, maybe there is a, 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 a low investment when it comes to the, uh, to the soft skills, which is critical. And the soft skills we remember leaders we talked about, especially we really dealt with the issue of attitude for quite some time. And uh, we also talked about uh, emotional intelligence, the issues of uh, character, the issues of values, uh, the issues of motivation. Why am I leading? Why am I in this position of leadership? Uh, and that really changes uh, our philosophy and our thinking about uh, about leadership. Actually, our, our philosophy about leadership is, is uh, mostly... Uh, based on uh, our motivation, our belief about leadership and our belief about people. So if our belief about leadership and about people is well anchored, especially to the principles of God, then we find ourselves leading uh, people with um, a philosophy that is anchored on servanthood, a philosophy that is anchored in contribution, and a philosophy that uh, really looks for opportunities to make a difference uh, in people's lives. So we we post there and uh, we wish to pick it up from there. Today we'll start with lesson uh, seven uh, and then we'll embark on lesson eight. Uh, I don't know if there is uh, probably anybody who may wish just to share a reflection from what we shared last week before we start our discussion to, uh, today. I'll just allow maybe one or two people uh, if there is any reflection as uh, we embark on today's discussion. Uh, please feel free just to unmute and just mention, um, maybe you picked up something, you decided to run with it over the week. Uh, probably maybe you shared this knowledge with other people. Any experience that you might have had this week, uh, we'll um, appreciate just to get a comment uh, as we continue. Okay, so I think we'll we'll continue because we're just uh, starting, just uh, warming up. So uh, as we embark on today's discussion, uh, let's focus on the what will come along the way, and then we'll be able to share our experience uh, even as we continue. So I know we really exhausted quite a lot last week. We really had a very open conversation. So I I'm sure we um, uh, we we are set for night just to move on with the discussion so allow me just to have my video off for a while just so that uh, uh, the recording can come out clear so uh, leaders remember we said um, the goal is to raise our leadership bar raise our leadership bar and uh, i don't know if this is happening practically to you as a person if you can do a self-evaluation from the day you joined this uh, leadership master class is there something that you feel uh, has changed uh, in your leadership style, even in your personal life? Is there something that has already shifted 
Is there something that has uh, already um, been transformed? Uh, do you feel you are now able to optimize your leadership capacity more? Have you probably uh, developed more understanding of yourself, a deeper self-awareness? And that's what we are we are aiming at, that uh, we can say, I joined this masterclass at this level, but I've been able to expand my knowledge base, been able to exp uh, uh, enhance my impact, been able to enhance my network. Uh, I'm now a better leader. I'm, I'm having probably a broadened understanding about leadership that I didn't know. And it's also translating to the to results and transformation uh, where we are. So just to uh, bring out this so that um, we, we can be able to keep on evaluating ourselves. As you can note, there's a lot of reflection in this masterclass. Yeah, and uh, those actual, the actual transformation happens in those uh, reflection moments. So we really treasure reflection. Uh, along the journey of uh, uh, this masterclass. So uh, there, there's quite a lot, uh, a number of comments that are coming from your end. When you submit the weekly evaluation, we're able to pick a few comments. And just I, pick, I picked a few of them. Uh, one is that a leader and a manager are all important in an organization. Since a leader can also manage, uh, it's important to improve on every skill. I think we talked about this last week. And then leadership and management are vital in our daily lives. And uh, someone said the topics are fascinating and instill credible and practical knowledge. So this is what uh, you share, you've shared and uh, we appreciate as you continue to share uh, the, the, the comments. Uh, so today we are going to look at two lessons as I highlighted, uh, lesson seven and lesson eight. And lesson seven, we'll look at three broad categories of leadership. Uh, there, are, there are three broad categories of leadership. So anytime you're talking about leadership, you can connect to these three broad categories. I'll give you a highlight of that. And then we'll embark on uh, a journey of how leadership has evolved. I think uh, it up with this, this will help us appreciate uh, the journey of uh, leadership. It will also help us to appreciate the different concepts and the philosophies of leadership. There are times we hear these conversations, uh, leaders born, made, and all that. It's a, it's a, it's a journey, and uh, there, are, there are different philosophies, there are different theories, uh, and therefore giving us that understanding uh, actually positions us to have a, um, a rich conversation uh, on the issues of leadership. We're able to bring out these concepts uh, with um, a good background and a good understanding of probably this philosopher said this because he had this understanding, but other uh, philosophies have come up, other theories of leadership has, have come up. So do we still believe in this or have we continued to evolve? And uh, what is probably the latest philosophies about leadership that are important to us? So that is uh, basically what we want to look at as we walk through this journey of uh, evolution of leadership. And uh, to, to start the discussion, uh, as we look at the history of leadership, as we look at the philosophy and the evolution of leadership, I'll uh, share a few quotes with us. And uh, as part of history, uh, I'll request you if you can be able to note who said what, or who pointed out, or what was the source of uh, this, who, who, what, who, who is the origin? Or, uh, who do we attribute to uh, these quotes that I'll share? Okay. So uh, the first one, uh, guess the leader. That is the, uh, the exercise, guess the leader. Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Then do not wait for leaders. Do it alone person to person. Who do we attribute this to? I believe uh, one, do not wait for leaders to do it, do it by yourself was Mother Teresa mm -hmm. as she was helping the children and in, in the people of India. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other one is, yeah. The other one is uh, the American. I believe it was Kennedy. You are right. 
right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very powerful message there about leadership. Mm. Yeah, and 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 the first one, uh, there are many occasions we have really referred to this statement by John F. Kennedy, the third, fifth president of the U.S. Uh, ask not what you can do, what what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Yeah, it positions us to think in terms of contribution, and then do not wait for leaders; do it alone, person to person. Actually, it continues to say the leader you are waiting for might never show up. Mm. Yeah, so uh, when there is an opportunity, when there is a gap, uh, the best thing to do is to take an initiative. Thank you, Rose, and congratulations for that. Let's move on to the second set. Yeah, so again, let's take a guess of uh, the leaders here. A leader is uh, one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. And then if you judge people, you have no time to love them. Let's take a guess of these two leaders again. Yeah, so feel free either on the chat or just to unmute and mention. Yes, yes, just I think the first one is John Maxwell. Uh -huh. A leader is one who knows the way, goes the way. Uh -huh. Thank you, Josephine. Uh, the second one. Yeah, and the, the, the exercise is guess the leader. So it may not uh, be right, but you can take a guess as well. So if you judge people, you have no time to love them powerful message about leadership as well. Yeah, so you're, just when you are right, the first one is John C. Maxwell. And then the second one is Mother Teresa again. Yeah, her message was really anchored on love. Yeah, so we have another one here. If it falls you a lot to be a street sweeper, sweep streets like uh, Michelangelo painted pictures, like Shakespeare wrote poetry, like Bodhvon composed music, sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will have to pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper who swept his job well. Powerful message about mastery and excellence and impact as well. Guess the leader? Martin Luther King Jr. You're right, Josephine. You're right. Martin Luther uh, King Jr., an American, an African American Baptist minister and an activist. Okay, then we have here another one, a very powerful message again. A real leader uses every issue, no matter how serious and sensitive, to ensure that at the end of the debate, we should emerge stronger and more united than ever before. This is uh, an African, an African uh, president in one of the African countries, but is now late. Someone who also believed in this message. Was it Mandela? Yes, 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 yes. You are right, Nelson Mandela. Yeah, a real leader uses every issue no matter how serious and sensitive. And I think you can relate with what he went through yeah, in this statement to ensure that at the end of the debate, we should emerge stronger and more united than ever before. This message speaks about what he believed and also how he lived uh, and how he resolved issues. Okay, and then I suppose leadership at one time meant muscles, but today, it means getting along with people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another powerful message there. Now we are looking at uh, 
Uh, this is um, uh, Asia, a leader who really uh, fought for his country through nonviolence, uh, nonviolence means. This was a global leader. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. could guess Indra Gathi, but I don't know whether it's him. Yeah, who? Gathi from India. You are right. You are right. Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. You are right. <laughs> yeah. And he lived this message. You can, you can actually, you can relate the lifestyle of um, some of these leaders with what they believed. And what we're talking about the philosophy of a leader. Mm. Mm. So I suppose leadership at one time meant muscles, but today it means getting along with people. Uh, I don't know when we watch uh, what is going on uh, between Russia and uh, uh, and and uh, and um, Ukraine. I don't know. It really speaks a lot, uh, and I don't know what the end will be. But we can now see the kind of destruction that is taking place, not just in those two countries, but globally. Yeah. So uh, I think just to reflect, and then uh, leadership is a privilege to better the lives of others. This one is a uh, Kenyan. Not an opportunity to satisfy personal greed. A leader, uh, a leader who led our could country. Be, could be to yeah. be my Kibaki. Yes, you're right, Josephine. You're right, you're right. I'm my Kibaki, third president of Kenya. He believed in this. He spoke very, very strong about this. And I think that's why he was able to have um, an impact in this country because of his philosophy, his, his belief about leadership as a privilege to better the lives of others. Yeah, and that's why I was saying our the belief of a leader is really powerful because it, it's um, manifested in the leadership style of, 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 of that leader. Good, so thank you so much for your contribution. Uh, let's now build a little bit on, uh, 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 in terms of... Uh, just broadening our knowledge from these leaders and appreciation of the power of a belief and the power of philosophy and how it manifests in a, a leader's lifestyle. So there are three categories of leadership. Generally, we normally, leadership is classified, uh, historically actually, leadership is classified into these three categories, uh, political leadership, religious leadership, and military leadership. These are broader, there might be others, uh, but uh, that, that might fall under this. Uh, but generally, we talk about this as the broad categories. And uh, I'll just give a highlight and not go into the details because just to appreciate that uh, these three categories have different functions. And uh, uh, we, I think we are in these systems. We are in the political systems based on the countries that are represented here. So we have an understanding of uh, this, how these um, uh, systems um, operate. So, for example, the political leadership. Uh, for those of us who are in Kenya, we know we've just come through uh, a political season, especially when it comes to election of leaders. And uh, we have now political leaders in different functions. And uh, we, we normally say political leadership is a function, not, not a position, rather than a position. So you occupy that function and perform the duties of that function. And uh, the role of that leader is obtained through the ability. I think the only issue I normally have with this this, this uh, definition is that aspect of uh, the ability. But being a global, um, a global perspective, then it works probably in some in other countries. It might work well in other countries. It may not work well in other countries. Uh, because uh, I don't know if we, do we always appoint or get leaders based on their ability to serve that particular function. Yeah. So this is, I'm sure this is an issue that can be looked at from different, a different angle. I was watching a clip from Malaysia, from uh, Singapore. 
from Singapore, and they were um, just giving uh, a background on how they appoint a minister. And actually, you can see that an issue of ability being very, very key for you to become a minister. The aspect of ability is core, and they take those people through a process, a very vigorous process, for you to be you become a junior minister, then before you become a senior minister, really gone through a lot of vigorous um, uh, scrutiny and uh, and also capacity building so that you can fit at a global perspective. So uh, uh, political leadership, uh, we are saying it's about that leader mobilizing the community so that we, they can be able to formulate uh, strategies that will address uh, particular problems uh, within that that community. That's why you 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 uh, you you hear from political leaders. They they lead mostly through stakeholders engagements, yeah, because they are there. They are a bridge between the resources and and the people. And for political leadership, there are some qualities that are important, critical. Uh, just summarize to ten, ten most expected qualities for good political leaders. And as we look at this, let's try to look out there uh, within the political uh, the political world and try to see if we are getting these qualities in our leaders. So we look at this from two perspectives. Are we getting these qualities from our leader? I know we'll generalize, uh, but just to give us a picture, to give us a feel, it may not, it may not be accurate, uh, again, we also look at this quality from ourselves. Ourselves, do we also demonstrate uh, this quality within our leadership uh, spaces? So we can see patriotism, good education, which could also be subjective depending with the uh, the the function, uh, honesty, political professionalism, charisma, intelligence, responsibility, strength of character service to the people and bravery. Among these qualities, which one do we feel our political class uh, are strong? Probably they have a strength uh, or they are strong in those particular qualities. Which one do we, can we single out? Uh, just as, as a sample saying like, I think in this quality, they, 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 they seem to be strong in these particular qualities or quality. <laughs> For me, I think they are brave. 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 They are very brave. Yeah, they are very brave. Right? That's what I say. Because these are people who you can see somebody who will even have a a, a party that uh, you are very sure it is not going anywhere. It's mm. not going to win. But they still continue ahead selling their, their vision. They are very brave. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Josephine. Mm -hmm. Any other? Some, yeah, some leaders, some leaders are very patriotic. They uh, they would do it because of the country. They would do it for the love of their their country and what they want to see happen in their uh, during that generation that they're in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about the areas we feel they are wanting? Maybe they are a bit weak. The honesty. Honesty. Honesty is questionable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know what political professionalism would mean. Mm -hmm. Because I think whatever that would mean to me mm -hmm. is something that is a it's a high secret. Eh? Yeah. It's only understood by those who go to pro politics. Those who go to politics, uh, you find somebody going to politics, you know them in a different way. When they get there, they become something different. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what political mm -hmm. professionalism is, but if that's what it means, then they are all political. They have it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I would also add that uh, charisma is almost like attitude, you know. Mm -hmm. If you believe in it, you believe in what you're teaching and saying, mm -hmm. you will make some change. Mm -hmm. True, true, true. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think we should add a strategy here, just uh, listening to what Josephine was uh, uh, explaining about bravery, where a leader has a, a, a party that doesn't really seem to go anywhere, yet they, are, they still believe in it. I think we can add strategy because probably they are looking far. They, they are trying to, poly, to, to popularize the party. Yeah, maybe this time I just want to popularize the party, but I, I may not win, but I'm targeting uh, either to get into a coalition or I'm targeting to win in the future. So I think they're also strategic. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, every career there is an element of uh, professionalism. Uh, I think when it comes to doctors, there is a code of conduct. When it comes to lecture, lecturers, there is a code of conduct, civil servants, all that. So I believe even in the political arena, they also have their how they conduct themselves. And I, I think that's why we, we always say in politics, there are no permanent friends and there are no permanent enemies because they, they believe in something. They believe probably this is a game. So we might get muddy, but not personal. At the end of the day, we, we, we are still together in this journey. So uh, how about I'm ourselves? Thinking about that, yeah. about political mm -hmm. professionalism that I think they have mm -hmm. is top secret. Mm -hmm. Those people are secretive. Mm -hmm. The things they say mm -hmm. in the media, vis a vis what is the truth on the ground is quite different. Mm -hmm. So they keep top secret. And even when they are enemies, they don't disclose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they only... They will give you an idea, but they will not disclose. Mm. Yeah, yeah. True, true, true. Mm -hmm. It's true. So uh, I think this is good enough. Uh, so we can also look at ourselves, just, uh, uh, just try to see how are we in terms of all these qualities. That's something that we just allow each and every one of us to think through uh, as we move on. Now, I'll move on to the second one, second cat category. There's a lot we learn from uh, uh, from this second category, which is uh, military leadership uh, in pursuit of excellence. One is excellence when it comes to military leadership. The aspect of excellence is really uh, well um it's at the heart of, uh, of this kind of leadership. So the art of influencing, directing men in such a manner to obtain their willing obedience. That willing obedience is key to obtain respect, confidence, and loyal cooperation in order to accomplish the mission. So uh, we are saying the definition of military leadership is the art of influencing and directing men in such a manner to obtain their willing obedience. We've been talking about influence, uh, we are also talking about directing and uh, what there must be something that will trigger this willingness, the willingness to obey, respect and confidence. And that can be attributed to uh, what I'll point out in this slide, that military leadership is a process of influencing others to accomplish the mission. So the mission is, uh, must be very clear. The purpose must be also be clear or is, to, is uh, clearly uh, stated and then uh, a vision direction uh, strategy and vision and motivation so these are some of the issues that actually trigger that willingness and remember leaders we've been talking about the power of a vision which again we'll talk about uh, later on this there has to be something that uh, causes us to influence the people that uh, we are leading there has to be something that is so deeply embedded in us that when we sell it out, uh, there is that willingness that I want to be part and parcel of this. I, I feel I can sacrifice. I feel I can make a contribution on this. So uh, for military, military leadership, uh, uh, th there has to be a clear mission. I'm thinking about our, our military when they were moving to Somalia. The, the mission was clear. There was an issue that we needed to address as a country. So the mission was clear, the purpose was clear, and uh, even the motivation. Maybe these soldiers were motivated in different ways so that they can be able to engage in that in that mission. 
So uh, clear clarity of the mission and also a clarity of the purpose. Some of the factors of leadership, this again cuts across, not just in military leadership. This has to be clear in any mission. Uh, the lead and the leader. So we have the leader, we have the probably the team members, we have the situation. What are we addressing? What is the issue at hand? And how are we going to engage uh, when it comes to communication? There might be other factors, but I think these are just uh, four key, key factors when it comes to uh, military leadership. And then principles of leadership. Yeah, a number of principles of uh, leadership. Uh, as as far as uh, military leadership is concerned, I think I just you can just scan through them. Yeah, understanding of self and also uh, personal development. Uh, uh, be, being technical, uh, having a, a knowledge in terms of probably the operations, the equipment you use, the, the environment. So technically and also tactically proficient. And uh, responsibilities, uh, taking responsibility for the for your action. And another one very important, making sound and timely decisions. Because when it comes to military leadership, we, uh, we are leading in a in an environment that is uh, uh, that is very volatile, and therefore even one minute can make a big difference. So making sound and timely decisions is critical uh, as far as the military. Uh, leadership is concerned. And then set the example, lead uh, in front. Remember when we were looking at leaders vis-a-vis -vis manager, and I showed you that 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 image there, that picture of uh, the two scenarios, and you could see the leader is actually working together with the people to address an issue. That, that connects very well with the military leadership. And then know your soldier, understand the soldiers. We have really dealt uh, with the issue of um, awareness. We talked about the colors, we talked about the, the temperaments, and they help us to position ourselves and also to position our people appropriately. Yeah, Think of a goalkeeper being positioned as a striker. That team will lose. But if we know this is a goalkeeper and position the person appropriately, then the team can win. Then uh, develop a sense of responsibility. Uh, that's uh, important. Ensure that the task is understood. This is also part of communication. Uh, leaders, we remember that clip uh, about the learning loops when there is a transition between one manager and another one. And uh, we could see there are issues that are, uh, are happening because maybe the transition was not uh, adequately uh, done. This was uh, people who are using single loop and uh, they require to use triple loop to test and ensure that everybody understands um, what uh, is supposed to be done. So. Uh, ensure that the task is understood, supervised and accomplished, and then build the team. It has to be a team. Uh, it has to be a team. Uh, as they move out there, they have to be a team. And that really is a one key success factor of any successful uh, organization or successful uh, leadership. And then employ your unit in accordance with its capability. Yeah, And uh, there are some leadership one of them is knowledge it's knowledge based yeah knowledge based uh, uh when um, for military leadership i know they have so many trainings so many trainings because capacity building ensuring that these people are well equipped to be able to uh, uh deliver uh so knowledge is courage initiative uh, decisiveness and then tact just and then lastly dependability can we depend as we move on can i depend on the person that is taking care of my back yeah so that in case there are any issues that person is able to protect me and bearing endurance enthusiasm and selfishness yeah, these are people who are fighting getting to danger yet we are still moving towards the danger you know you might come up alive come out alive or even uh, die there, but they still feel we have a responsibility uh, to, to, to do. Then integrity, loyalty, and judgment. So I think when we just think about military leadership, and uh, we see a lot of sacrifice, see a lot of sacrifice. We see people, probably if we look at them from the qualities that we talked about uh, political leadership, we see especially the issue of patriotism is really strong. Uh, in military leadership, yeah, patriotism. We see bravery, 
we see those some of those qualities that we have talked about uh, in the previous slides. So, and I think they speak to us. Maybe if we are to measure ourselves when it comes to bravery, uh, if we are to measure ourselves uh, when it comes to uh, patriotism, when we, when it comes to unselfishness, when it comes to dependability. Uh, I think these are qualities that are important, not just to these categories of leadership, but to all categories and all types of, of leadership. Then finally, we yes. Okay. Then finally, we have religious leadership. Religious leadership. Yeah, so a religious leader is the leader of a religious order, and they give people the hope, guidance, and courage they need to stay strong in their in their faith yeah religious leaders they give the people hope guidance and courage they need to stay strong in their faith so religious leaders deal with the intrinsic person the inner person they deal with the inner person and they these are the people who ensure that people remain hopeful people remain guided people do not lose faith yeah, so they ground the people so strong uh, when it comes to issues of uh, the issues of um, uh, issues of faith, and uh, there are some very important uh, aspects that are uh, key for religious leadership. We are, one, we are saying uh, these are shepherd leaders. So shepherd leadership is important, and then servant leadership. Yeah, servant leadership. We'll talk about this uh, uh, next, and then humility relationships and stewardships and relationships because uh, we, for religious leadership is uh, is actually based on uh, relationships because these are people who are working with uh, they, they are in that church or that uh, an uh, non business entity on a free will on a free will they can be there today they may choose to be somewhere else tomorrow so it's a more of a a free will connection it's more of a uh, a choice and therefore building that strong relationship is really what maintains this kind of uh, uh, a leader and uh, and followers uh, together so relationships are very key uh, when it comes to religious leadership and then uh, a leader invest in the growth of uh, growth and development of the followers and uh, he empowers the people or he or she empowers the people to become what God has gifted them to be. It's not about uh, probably uh, making them like us, but it's providing a platform for them to be able to e explore who they they are, what they have, and then serving that uh, out to the world. So basically for religious leadership, that's what I can highlight uh, as we now start to discuss about the, the evolution of leadership. So maybe I can take a comment. If there is um, any comment, then we move on to the second part of lesson seven. Yeah, if there's any comment. Okay. No, no comment on that one. Okay. So we'll uh we'll I think we'll pick from the end. So let's talk about the evolution of leadership. How has leadership evolved over the years? And I'll mention uh, some theories, ten of ten theories, just uh, in brief. And I will start with the Great Man theory by historian Thomas, eighteen forty. Uh, this discussion of uh, leaders born or leaders made, these are some of the historians who came up with, this, uh, with these theories. So the great man theory talks about or states that leaders are born, not made. So this is attributed to this theory, the great man theory, that great leaders will arise when there is a great need. And there are some natural leaders. Uh, natural leaders... Um, are best uh, we uh, are best uh, on some built-in qualities of leadership, and therefore, if you have those qualities, uh, then 
you could be you could be categorized as a leader and if you don't have those qualities uh, natural qualities then you will be classified uh, not a leader for example person who is charismatic could easily be classified to to be a leader yeah uh, so there, there are some some of the qualities uh, that could classify that person to be a leader and they have, they have to be natural uh, qualities and then the trait theory also connects to the first theory it connects to the great man theory that great leaders are born not made again but uh, this one also focuses on uh, some particular traits that if you have these traits or qualities uh, uh, then you are a leader and the theory assumes that if you could identify people with the correct traits you'd be able to identify leaders or individual with the leadership potential and the, one of the th traits again is uh, the one that i've mentioned uh, charisma among many other uh, traits that were associated with uh, with the leadership and then we have the skill theory of leadership uh, by robert 1955 and according to this uh, theory for you to be a leader you need to have technical skills in your domain people skills and conceptual skills yeah, the ability to see the big picture and think strategically. And I think leaders, this really relates very well, even with the current scenario. Uh, I think any leader, any successful leader needs to have these technical skills, uh, also people skills, as well as conceptual skills. And also that leader needs to think strategically. This really connects very well uh, uh, with the current uh, situation. And then we have the style of leadership the style theory of leadership. So uh, this, this theory, uh, it focuses on the styles such as democratic, autocratic, transformational, uh, charismatic, among the other styles of leadership. So this is a theory that now classified the, the different uh, styles of, uh, that came up with the different styles of, of leadership. Then we have situational leadership theory, yeah, situational leadership theory uh, by Paul Hesse in 1969. Uh, according to this theory, there is no one model that fits all situations. There is no one style of leadership that fits all situations. Yeah, so the leader must therefore adapt to the to the situation. And uh, probably to explain this one better, let me also combine with this with the contingency theory. Contingency theory is a reverse of the situational theory. Uh, yeah, it says that it says that pick you pick the right leader for the situation rather than the leader adapting to the situation. So if the situation changes, uh, maybe within an organization, then the best thing you can do is to pick another leader that fits that situation. But situational leadership says uh, you need to adapt as a leader. If the situation changes, then you adapt to the new situation. And I don't know what is your feeling about these two theories, situational leadership theory and the contingency theory. I don't know what you are feeling about this. The first one, the leader adapts to the situation. The second one, you pick the leader. If the situation changes, you will change the leader. Can think about this maybe as we as we share our reflection at the end of the lesson. This is something that uh, maybe you can make a contribution on. Yeah, so just think about it. Uh, the style theory of leadership. Uh, just to give you a highlight, uh, we have autocratic leadership, uh, where now decisions and power is centered around the leader. Democratic leadership. It's about the people. Uh, I think I don't need to really say much about this because. Sure, most of us, uh, probably all of us are conversant with them, but just to appreciate uh, uh, the, the, in a high level. And then transformational leadership. The key word here is, again, something that inspires people to be able to move together. I remember we talked about some, uh, no, we'll talk about this later on, some qualities of transformational uh, leadership. And then less fair leadership, hands off leadership. A best example here could be uh, the late president, Mwai Kibaki. He was a hands-off leader, yet he was able to uh, significantly achieve high results. 
yeah so i think it also depends with the the the, the people you are leading and uh, what kind of uh, style that will work out uh, for you so uh, uh, under situational leadership theory uh, there are four primary leadership styles yeah there are four styles and these styles can be applied depending with the, the kind of people you are leading yeah, so i'll give you the two scenarios so let me first just uh, highlight the styles so we have the telling style the telling style uh, basically the leader engages keeps on instructing keeps on telling people or guiding people what to do so there's a very close walk uh, with the people and then selling uh, this is also this can also be uh, more of a, a person who targets to be to be uh, hands off so you sell the idea so that people can be able to buy and be motivated or be self driven and then participating uh, again this approach uh, allows the leader to have less direction and allows members of the group to be able to take more active role yeah so uh, uh, the leader is getting, getting off is trying to ensure that people work together uh, so that at the end of the day uh, we can get to the last one which is delegating yeah the hands over approach to leadership so uh, here we have uh, members who have been able to uh, impress probably the vision and they are able now to undertake the tasks as required. So telling, selling, participating and delegating. But how do you choose which style to use? You choose based on the maturity of the group or the maturity of the team that you are leading. For example, for telling, uh, we have uh, four, four levels of maturity. The first level of maturity is uh, where you have group members that lack the knowledge, the skills, and also the willingness to undertake the task. So this one, the best style here is telling. Yeah, and then we have the selling, which works with maturity level two. We have members that are willing, very enthusiastic, but they lack when it comes to issues of knowledge and skills. So selling works out this, works out better until uh, they embrace it, probably they grow in their skills because already they are they are willing and they're enthusiastic. So we just need to capacity build these people. Yeah. And then we have participating, which works well with maturity level three, where group members have the skills and capability to complete the task. But what are they lacking? They are unwilling to take responsibility. So this one requires that the leader works together again with the people, participate, allow them to participate, uh, as we try to sell the vision until now they are able to take responsibility and uh, the willingness. And then we have delegating. Yeah, so this works with group members that are highly skilled and they're also willing to complete the, the task. So this, they have the skills, they have the willingness. Then we delegate and allow them uh, to undertake the task. So that is under the style. And then we continue with the theories where we have transactional leadership. Transactional is more give and take, yeah? So we are engaging, uh, I have the incentives and I also have the, I have the sanctions. Or, uh, so we, 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 we relate or we exchange between the two of them. So if you fulfill a task, or then you are able to get a reward. Again, if you miss the target, uh, then there are also sanctions. This works, Quite often, where we have a, a performance-based management system, yeah. So where there is a clear clarity in terms of you set the target uh, yourself, you agree this is what I target by this time. So if you get them, you you meet the targets, then maybe there are some incentives. If you miss, there are probably some sanctions. So it's give and take. It's a transactional, the transaction uh, kind of of leadership, and then transformational leadership focus on how do we cultivate followership rather than paying for it. It's, it's almost, uh, again, like uh, sort of a reverse of uh, the first or uh, a reverse of transactional leadership. How do we cultivate followership rather than paying for it or punishing non-compliance? How do we become more inspirational? How do we get to the hearts of the people so that we are able to they were able to cultivate that followership willingly. Yeah. 
And that's now when the issue of inspirational leadership comes in handy, transformational leadership. And then we have leader member exchange theory. Yeah, so again, here there's an exchange. Yeah, uh, leadership success in this theory is based on a fair exchange between the leader and the followers. Yeah, and what do they exchange? There are three dimensions that um, they look, we look at this uh, leader member exchange theory. One is mutual respect of each other uh, capability. So there's that mutual respect. I respect your capability. I res you respect my capability. Then we're able to collaborate and work together. And then there is a deepened sense of reciprocal trust. We trust each other. And then lastly, a sense of obligation. You have your role to play. I have my, ro my role to play. And then we respect each other and uh, create a, a cohesive working relationship. So leader member exchange theory uh, is uh, based on a fair exchange. We have mutual respect. We have a uh, reciprocal, reciprocal trust. And also we have, we are all fulfilling our obligations. So this is uh, 1995 by, by Crane. Uh, and then we have uh, urban leadership. This is the, the apex. This is 1970s, but ideally, this may not actually be 1970s. I think it may be in terms of uh, the the history of um, uh, it's just like the way people discover mountains. Uh, someone says, I discovered this mountain, but it has been there. Other people have been there. Probably now that person took um, an advantage either to document it somewhere or, uh, or, or uh, probably uh, to be able to give it more limelight or something like that. So even the southern leadership has been there. Uh, Robert uh, Greenleaf might just have taken an advantage probably to now uh, package it and put it in, um, in, in a way that people are able now to uh, study and learn from it as a concept of leadership. But it has been there. We are saying it's a timeless concept. Remember from the, the history of... Uh, uh, early years of uh, of leadership. Uh, those who believe in the Bible, uh, from the life of Jesus, this has been a concept about servant leadership. So it's a concept that has been there for long. Yeah, but we are saying a servant leader is a servant first. It focuses on serving rather than being served. And such a leader creates an environment of trust and cooperation. And leaders, I think as we read this, actually this is what uh, we are driving to in this masterclass. This is what we are driving to. Yeah, a leader that uh, creates an environment of trust, cooperation, reciprocal service, and ultimately high performance. They're saying people follow this leader out of love and gratitude rather than compulsion or fear. And these leaders do not manipulate people. They inspire and create and an environment where people become self-motivated. Just think about this. Just think about this. And uh, scan around. We have a number of leaders who have really demonstrated this. I know we all demonstrating um, uh, this kind of leadership, maybe at different scales. But we are again trying to look what are the opportunities to further this model of leadership yeah, in our leadership. How do we further this? Where are we and how do we scale it up? Yeah. So for the global leader, this is now our concept. We are saying as we think global, lead local and transform the world, then we need to, to, uh, to integrate a number of leadership models, a number of leadership theories that are important to scale us up to the global leadership, uh, to the global leadership space. Some of those uh, uh, styles, one of them is transformational leadership where we lead through inspirational and the clarity of a vision. And then ambidextrous leadership. And then we have servant and purpose-driven leadership qualities. So these are the qualities that we feel can scale us to the, to the global leadership space. When we are transformational, when we are servant leaders, and when we are also leading uh, based on a clear purpose clear purpose and a purpose that is beyond just uh, a personal benefit but a purpose that looks at serving the people and serving the higher calling and uh, the higher calling in life and then ambidextrous so ambidextrous what does it mean i'll conclude this 
organization by just mentioning the ambidextrous leadership. Uh, it's a concept uh, derived from a Latin word, which means being able to use two hands equally, two hands equally. So we bring this concept to leadership. They're saying ambidextrous leadership uh, is uh, a style in which the leader is able to use two aspects equally, or a leader possesses uh, some of the qualities uh, that are uh, like using two hands, right and left. And what does it mean? One, it could mean uh, having a dual focused leadership approach uh, that works towards what is best for the individual and what is best for the organization as a whole simultaneously. And we have seen, uh, we have seen uh, companies that are doing very well in this, You've seen companies that have really taken this keenly. They are focusing on how do we create an enabling environment? How do we take care of the welfare of the people? And that has translated to the growth of that organization. So a, a dual approach, that's ambidextrous leadership, left and right, we are balancing the two hands. Again, it also means exploring new opportunities yeah, while exploiting existing opportunities. So we look far, but we also take care and take advantage of what we have at the moment. And then finally, it also means exploring long-term goals while serving short-term goals. So as a leader, I need to have long-term goals. Yeah, sometimes we divide them into three. Long-term, long we have medium-term, and then we have short-term. But here we are saying I need to have a sight of the future, but I also need to take notice of what requires to be done uh, at the moment, intentionally and strategically, yeah, so that we lo don't lose sight of the future and also we, we take care of what is within our environment now. And uh, leaders, uh, when you talked about uh, managers vis-a-vis -vis leadership, we said the challenge is to balance as the, uh, the two, is to balance the two. And if we manage to balance the two and they're able to work together, it really helps us in terms of uh, uh, exploring long-term goals because a leader will really stretch as far and it will also help us to make sure that we are maximizing the now, the short term because the manager will help us to deal with the day-to-day -day, uh, operations. So we have we, we, we end up having a, an organization that is able to serve well in the present and also an organization that is well aligned to serve uh, in the future. So this is what a uh, global leader uh, uh, the face of a global leader, uh, a leader that is transformational, a leader that is ambidextrous, a leader, a leader that is a servant, and also is a purpose-driven leader. With those qualities, we can really uh, be able to sell ourselves and talk ourselves, about ourselves as global leaders. And uh, that will not be, uh, it, it's, it will be practical because as we do this, I'm sure the kind of impact that we'll have actually will position uh, each and every one of us at a global level in terms of uh, creating impact. So uh, we have a leadership challenge and uh, the leadership challenge is just to explore uh, the opportunities to be able to advance towards a global leader by looking at the, the styles that you have talked about and what areas do we need to enhance. So that's lesson, lesson seven. So maybe as we transition to lesson eight, I can just uh, maybe pause there for two minutes or so, just to allow us just to uh, internalize what we have discussed. And as we internalize, maybe um, uh, if uh, there's something that you wish to add, I think this is an opportunity just to help us uh, appreciate this discussion and also uh, make any contribution in addition to what we have shared. So let me just allow uh, maybe a one or two minutes break as we uh, share on uh, any reflection. Any reflection so far as oh, we... Sorry. Yeah, I was muted. Okay. Yeah, um, I said there was quite a bit of information, evolution of leadership, and it's, it's, there's a lot to learn from it. I mm -hmm. kind of picked up uh, some things that I never, I, I mean, I hadn't read in the book, 
mm. but it's new information, very good. The combination of uh, different leaderships to end up with one that is so powerful. Mm. I would say uh, the global leadership, it looks to me like a servant leader combined with the ambidextrous, where you can do the former things you are doing or creating or, or, or even coming up with new plans. Mm. coming up with new strategies as a leader but you're also involving the people so that you're, you're you're not just all hands in but you're letting others make decisions and lead an example of that was Mike Ibaki so we say there are many ways where we can include this type of leadership mm. and that's it wow Thank you so much. Uh, you can see the ambidextrality aspect can apply in so many, uh, so many dimensions, just as you have pointed out. Yeah, so we can optimize on the current strategy as we come up and develop a new strategy. So like sort of a transition. Uh, I think I like that also, that dimension as well. Yeah, and by the way, that's a new word for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be dexterous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Okay. Just feel any contribution and uh, Pamba? Yeah. Okay, I think we'll uh, we we can also share on the chat. We can share on the chat as we as we progress. As uh, Rosa said, uh, it's a lot to just think through, internalize, reflect on. Yeah, so as you reflect, if something comes up and uh, you feel you want to share, it'll just be okay to share on the chat, and then we'll we'll have a look at it. So we'll conclude by looking at uh, lesson uh, eight, the leadership development phases. So ideally we had uh, a discussion around this, uh, but we want to uh, grow and expand much on this discussion, the leadership development uh, phases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so leadership is in phases. Uh, already at the very beginning, we talked about the leadership pyramid where we lead self, Maybe by clarity of beliefs, clarity of values, clarity of principles, but we also bring another aspect of character formation uh, in this uh, in this discussion, and then we scale up to leading others where we have positive impact and influence. Then the leading leaders where we now we we are like walking, uh, we we are looking beyond just where we are leading followers, but uh, we are building. Uh, leaders who are working and empowering followers, and this this is now level the level where uh, a leader tends to have uh, a significant impact because it's not just impacting one on one uh, followers in terms of followers, but is impacting a leader that is impacting followers. This is the thinking of global leadership network. Why don't we impact leaders who will impact more other people? And at the end of the day, you will have more impact. And I uh, will deal with small teams. These teams are leaders. Walk with them, uh, a journey, not just a one-day event. Walk with them for some time, impact them. Then let them impact more leaders and more followers where they are. So Global, Leader, Global Leadership Network decided not to focus on the 80% uh, of the population, but to focus on the 20% of the population that impacts the 80% of the population. That's now when we, we, we're focusing on leading leaders or impacting leaders. And then we have leading movements. This is a higher level of uh, leadership. Yeah, leading movements. Uh, again, it builds up, builds up, because when you have leaders who are impacting, when you have leaders who are transforming, then actually you are a leader of movements because these leaders are also transforming at uh, different at different uh, levels. But uh, leading with movements can also be one person who is leading for a cause, a person who is uh, really uh, having significant impact directly on people. Yeah, 
directly on people. And I think you can see the three examples here, Martin Luther King Jr., Mother Teresa, uh, Nelson Mandela, and many others that we have not documented, including ourselves. I'm sure we are all in, impacting at different levels. Yeah, so leading movements, it, it's a level where someone is leading for a cause, someone is leading even at the expense of their life. They feel like this is something that I can sacrifice for. And that's why they, they, they scale up uh, to, uh, to that level. So uh, these are basically the, 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 uh, the, uh, the levels of leadership, even as we look at uh, the phases of leadership. And uh, leaders, we have talked about uh, self-leadership quite intensely. So you will allow me just to briefly uh, mention this aspect of self-leadership as much as we have talked about it from the very beginning. And this is very deliberate because if we become better as leaders, by default, the environments that we are in will also be transformed. So there are many times that we look at leadership from an outward uh, approach, uh, but uh, we decided, why don't we look at leadership from an inward approach? So, and that, that can help us achieve more impact and have more impact. So self-leadership is the foundation of any other form of leadership. And if self-leadership is, um, uh, is impactful and has, is transformative, then that leader is also able to transform uh, other people equally. So it's uh, where we influence ourselves to achieve, uh, to have an, a clear objective, to have clarity of vision, to have a life that is really focused a life that is looking in terms of uh, contribution, in terms of uh, making significant impact uh, within uh, within our our life our lifespan. Then self leadership is based on in intentional choices itself. It's by intentional choices. Yeah, it's being intentional. Uh, then we are able to make choices that uh, makes us uh, influential, impactful, and also of value to the people. Then self-leadership is also uh, self-motivated and is intrinsically motivated, yeah, where we take purposeful action, and make better leaders, entrepreneurs, and team members. So self-motivated and intrinsically uh, motivated. And that's why we need something to trigger from within, that vision that is within, uh, that keeps us awake. And then self-leadership determines effectiveness and impact of all other forms of leadership, team leadership, business leadership, yeah, um, strategic leadership, bringing the aspect of family leadership. All those forms of, of leadership are based on self-leadership. So self-leadership develops autonomy, ownership of choice. It's a personal so it leads based on responsibility and accountability. Accountability of what probably I have, what I possess. I possess a quality that I need to serve it out to people. I possess a gift that I need to serve it out. I possess a quality, an ability that should add value to the uh, people, to the, uh, the, 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 the lives of people. And then it's also modeled on other aspects uh, like health, taking accountability of our health. Yeah, uh, families, uh, finances, uh, living leadership within our environment, our community. That's also part of self-leadership. And then self-leaders, they develop deeper self-awareness, self-confidence, and self-belief. Just mention that. So we are saying self-awareness. We have talked about this. Having... Excuse me. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Uh interject i don't know how to put up my hand yeah. uh, can we go back to the last slide i just <laughs> i just didn't get all the info okay okay <laughs> okay so we have to reflect uh, on our finances and living mm. uh, i don't know yeah i was trying to just get the self uh how to develop ourselves Mm -hmm. self-awareness yeah mm -hmm. and getting okay so before you get into um leading organizations this is like the first step yes of leadership. yes, yes yeah. this is the first step mm -hmm. yeah sounds mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. all right yeah uh, and actually okay. and actually that's why we are saying this is the foundation of all other forms of leadership 
Oh yeah. 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 So the people who are becoming the or end up becoming global leaders. Yeah. They started with uh, self awareness and yeah. just interested development. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's good. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So self awareness. Uh, we're saying uh, knowing your in intentions and values, your strength. We've talked about our strengths, abilities, and weakness. So that's and self knowledge and self awareness. Uh, and uh, this has been of emphasis because uh, I think this is something sustainable. If I serve what I have, then um, I'm, uh, it, it's sustainable. It, it's self-motivating. Yeah, I can do it for as as long as I, I am alive and I have the health and the strength. I, I'll do it. I'll pour it out. I was looking at a clip by Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn is an American. He was an American. Um, leader and uh, he was um, a very motivational speaker, he's a very good motivational speaker, talked about issues of health, he, he had products global products and uh, the last clip I watched about Jim Rohn uh, I think he was around 73 or close to 80 years old he was a bit uh, he was a bit uh, weak in terms of health but I watched this man being taken to the podium to speak. And wow. uh, you could see the vigor, the passion. Yeah. This man spoke, could see the value, the wisdom. Uh, and that was the last speech he gave. He talked uh, passionately. Uh, people felt, it's like people were feeling like... Uh, this this was someone who was just starting to speak yet it was his sunset days and he left me with so many questions like what motivated this man to get out of hospital and go and speak what motivated mm -hmm. this man to uh, not really money at that time there has to be something else that was coming from the well inside him. That thing that kept him alive. And uh, and I think that's among the things that triggered even this conversation that we're having today. That thing that we can serve to the last minute, we still feel that we can deliver it. We can continue serving it, continue pouring it to people because it's not coming from within, from without. It's coming from within. And you're not struggling with it. It just keeps on flowing. I visited my mom in, uh, in, in our rural area. And she is now 85 years old. Uh, and when we were having a conversation, she told me, I'm still serving. Sometimes I don't go to church, but I still serve here in the house. Uh, my mom has built a foundation of uh, prayers. So people relate her to prayer. She is been so solid when it comes to uh, prayerfulness. Uh, mm -hmm. People come to him, young men, they want to get married, they will come and say, Shosh, we're getting married, uh, please pray for us. Uh, others will come, Shosh, we are opening a new business, uh, please pray for us. Willingly, nobody's calling, they're just flowing, uh, coming and just uh, uh, get becoming a blessing to her, she become a blessing to them. And, and that statement really, it was a very powerful statement from her. And it really made me to think, this is someone who is 85 years old. Plus, she is not able now to go to church or even to go to other places of worship. But she believes that I can still make a contribution, even here in the house. And people are following her, even in that house to be able to partake in that in that blessing. So leaders, I think this is some of the reflection like uh, that really made us to feel like, why, if we dig so deep in us, then we'll have something that we can serve to the last moment. If the, the motivation is deeply from within us, and if we have really connected with ourselves, we'll be able to get what we can serve to the very last day uh, of our lives. So uh, that's why we say it. In these trainings, we can do these trainings until you, you, you can do them until the last day 
uh, in this earth. As long as we have the courage, the strength, and uh, the health, and the platform, then we can continue serving, uh, serving uh, whatever we tap from within. I know I've posted there for quite some time, but I felt it's important just to bring it that way so that we really appreciate why we are really talking about these aspects of getting so deep within us, allowing that revelation of uh, what we have and how we can uh, really serve it out and why it's very, very important. Then self-confidence. Self-confidence actually comes from understanding of our strength and our abilities and building on them. It gives us and upscales ourselves, our self-confidence, developing the skills and becoming more uh, profici uh, proficient. And then self-efficacy is the belief that whatever comes our way, we can be able to handle it. It's a part of resilience. We can take the feedback, accept it, adjust, and advance. So with self-efficacy, we can be more creative, more innovative, uh, and uh, we can be more daring. And be more daring, can be, be able to dream bigger uh, because we believe that uh, we are able to make it, we can do it. Yes, so that belief that we can be able to make it. So these are three important qualities of a self-leader, self-awareness, uh, self-confidence and self-efficacy. And this is pro what propels someone to other higher levels of, of leadership. Good, so uh, just now to get, we're talking about the phases of leadership, just laying the foundation. So what are these three phases of leadership? They are based on uh, a book, Authentic Leadership by Bill George. Yeah, uh, and uh, he knows that leadership is not something that you are born with. This is also, again, his thinking, his concept of leadership. Leadership requires constant self-development and growth, and is a journey with three important phases. So there are three key phases of leadership. One, preparing for leadership. Then two, leading. Three, giving back. Yeah, preparing for leadership, leading, and giving back. And according to him, the authentic leader needs to possess some of the, these qualities, need to be purpose-driven and passionate, needs to be uh, anchored on values and behavior, needs to be anchored on relationships and connectedness, self-discipline and consistency, and also needs to lead with a heart. And the heart here means compassion compassion. That's the authentic leader. But I want us just to focus on these three phases of leadership. Uh, so preparing for leadership, this is mostly where we have self-leadership, where we have character formation, where we are building ourselves. Then we start moving. We have some rubbing against the world. We have some few challenges along the way, ups and downs. Then we get into leading, where we step up to lead where we have deepened our awareness, we have been able to nurture something, been able to nurture some qualities that are now uh, taking us to the arena of leadership. And then we start going, uh, we get to the peak of leadership. And then we get to the giving back, where we have generativity, giving, giving back wisdom, giving back knowledge, uh, through mentorship and uh, many other uh, avenues. So uh, this one, the first step of leadership is preparing for leadership through character development or self-leadership. Phase two is taking the initiative to lead, getting the opportunities, uh, gaps we can bridge in, yeah, uh, getting to spaces where we can offer solutions uh, through what we have. And then stage three, spreading our, wish, our leadership wisdom to others and giving back to the community. At this stage, sometimes we feel maybe the energy levels might be low and we have people that are more energetic. So we pour into them so that they can run with the energy now to also make a more, a more impact. So phase one, character formation, deepened awareness and identity. Phase two, visioning and team. Again, team comes in at level at phase two uh, because at this phase, we are at the peak of leadership. Get to the peak of leadership, then it means the issue of uh, the, the issue of uh, team is, is important. And then phase three is thinking generativity, uh, spreading our wisdom, passing on the knowledge, the skills, sharing the experiences uh, so that others are able to 
come on board. Uh, we like using this analogy of a flight uh, just to give us a feel of uh, uh, a feel of these uh, uh, phases of leadership. Just think of a flight and the phases that a flight goes through before the phase include the whole cycle. Uh, flight planning, pushback, taxi, taking off, uh, cruising, descent, final approach, and then landing. So we thought about this in terms of uh, even leadership. First one could be the planning where we are having character formation, thinking through our lives. We're having uh, time just to be able to really think about uh, what we have, what do we, how do we package it? How do we prepare ourselves uh, to offer it? How do we refine it? Then with that, we now start moving and uh, we start taking off. Uh, again, those are, that, that's the part we were saying there is a crucible, a crucible where we have uh, uh, some frictions. And this also happens uh, when a flight is taking off. So I remember when you're we taking, we starting this masterclass, we also had those moments uh, where we, we were feeling like, uh, are we really going to take off? I remember cohort one, we had three people and along the way, two of them dropped. So one was left and we were like, uh, seriously, are we going to train leaders at this rate? And the only one that was left was my wife. She had no choice, she had to stick around. Yeah, so those were crucible moments. Uh, yeah. yeah, but we kept going. That what we are talking about, self-efficacy. We said we can still do it. We can still do it. And I remember there's a quote I read about Mother Teresa. And that quote, uh, it really, it has really helped us to stay afloat. When Mother Teresa was quitting from teaching, because now she was really connected to her calling, uh, and uh, she was being given the last check, I think she was asked how she was going to, to feed the world to feed millions with that little money that she had. And she said, I will start feeding the first one, the first person I get, I'll feed that person. And by the grace of God, I'll be able to feed the whole world. So I'll feed one by one. And by God's grace, I'll be able to feed the world. That was a very powerful message to us because we felt like, wow, I think it's an opportunity to change one leader at a time. So you had three, you are remaining with one, work on that one as if you are working on a thousand. And, 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 uh, and that's uh, something that really kept us going. And uh, it made us to not uh, give up, but to continue feeding to the leaders. And by today, by God's grace, we are having five sessions running in a week. Uh, we are having leaders who are asking, like we are starting a new class because we have demand to have a, a class. So demand is now coming. What, what if probably we had uh, given up then these leaders who have made a contribution to these leaders? So leaders, I think just to encourage ourselves, especially pioneers, pioneers have a big task ahead of them. Listen to the story of Obama. And it was really en encouraging. There are moments he was giving up. The moment was feeling like we've called people, they haven't come. What do we do? Do we close and stop this community work? But he said, no, if we stop, who will change those young men? Who will transform those young men? Who will transform those young girls there? Who will listen to these young girls? And leaders, I think that's the motivation that if we stop what we are doing, who will change that young man? who will transform that young lady, who probably is supposed to be a, a, a global leader, yet requires someone to hold his or her hand. So uh, taking off has its own share of challenges, uh, but when we take off, we get to the cruising, the peak of leadership. This is where we have significant impact in people's life. And also we feel we are now optimized. And that's the opportunity that we have to make a significant impact to people's life. Then we go through that. At that time, we lose, use less energy because things have shaped up. Uh, even a flight at that time, you can go on autopilot. Uh, we've already broken through the, the clouds, broken through some of the challenges. So we do maximum work there. 
then we are conscious that we'll also start descending at a certain time. And as we descend, we want to also pass the baton, we want to ensure that we have given as much as possible to the people who are able again, who have the energy again to do, to take off, yeah. take off again, and also continue with the cycle as that. And as we, 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 we land, when a flight is landing, when a plane is landing, it doesn't land silently. It lands with a lot of energy. It lands with, with uh, uh, it, it makes, uh, it's actually con uh, concluding a journey. It's like a success, we've been successful. So we say even a leader when we are landing, you need to land with that vigor, with that, uh, with that um, sound of joy, sound of gladness that we have made it. Took off, cruised, now we are landing. I remember when we were celebrating some of the world leaders like uh, Reinhard Bonke, like um, uh, Nelson Mandela. It was a global celebration. It was a global function. They could not sneak out of the world. It had to be noticeable that there was a leader that lived. And uh, I think it's fair enough not to sneak out of the world, but to come out with impact with a change, it is something that uh, people feel this person contributed to our lives and people can pause and say, we know this leader because they, this leader impacted uh, on our lives. So uh, as uh, thinking through this, uh, I know today I'm sharing quite a lot and I think it's also important uh, just to really help us reflect deep. Uh, so I'll conclude by talking about these levels of leadership, connecting to what we talked in the pyramid, so we have personal leadership. Again, remember, personal leadership is uh, taking uh, taking account of personal strengths and traits, uh, managing them, optimizing them, serving them out. Then emerging leadership, where we become leaders of team, yeah, they, with some fundamental uh, leadership skills to be able to lead teams. Then we have team leadership, where we have leaders of leaders. Yeah, leaders of leaders. Yeah, strengthen leadership skills to lead a team of managers, a team of leaders with uh, uh, individual teams. Then we scale up to business leadership, leader of business, leader of different functions, different uh, categories of people. Uh, with uh, Well, here again, we optimize mostly on uh, performance and impact. So the principle of self-leadership is that you cannot lead yourself until you are able to lead. To lead, uh, you cannot lead yourself. If you cannot lead yourself, sorry, you will not be able to lead others. If I cannot be able to optimize what I have, then I cannot be able to help others optimize what they have. So self-leadership is foundational, as we said. It's inside-out leadership. It's inside-out leadership approach okay and then we have uh, another another model still the same on uh, levels of leadership where we have personal leadership we have team leadership business leadership and then here we have an additional one strategic leadership this is change leadership leaders who are able to lead uh, to to lead transition from one maybe from one state to another state a state of life state of an organization where we make transition yeah, so, so strategic leadership uh, influences others to voluntarily make decisions that enhance the prospects of an organization in terms of long-term success, while also taking care of the short-term, the short-term gains. So uh, again, I think this is important. And the key word here is vision, vision. Yeah, strategic leadership is uh, a case where a leader's a potential to express strategic vision for the organization. That ability to express strategic uh, vision of the organization is key when it comes to strategic leadership. It's part of the organization and uh, the leader is able to motivate uh, others, to persuade them to embark, acquire and uh, embark uh, in support of that vision. So I'll conclude by uh, these three levels of leadership by John C. Maxwell. John C. Maxwell, and this will be part of the reflection that I will wish uh, you think through over the week, uh, think through about these uh, three levels of leadership, analyze yourself where you are based on this, 
I know also based on the others, but I really want us to focus on these three levels of leadership, three levels of leadership. Talk about the phases of leadership. Uh, let's conclude by talking about these three, uh, five levels, sorry, five levels of leadership by John C. Maxwell. We reflect on these levels of leadership at personal level. And then we also reflect at these levels of leadership by looking at our leaders and how we can also help them to scale up. So according to John C. Maxwell, there are five levels of leadership. One is positional level of leadership, position, where a leader leads based on position. And this one, as much as we call this person a leader, it's actually more of a manager. Yeah, so positional level, and the key word here is rights. Yeah, this person possesses some rights. And therefore, people follow this leader because they believe they have to. They have to. They have no choice, but they have to follow this leader. Okay, so positional leadership based on rights, and people follow that leader because they have to. So there is less, there is less willingness from the team or from the members, there is low level of commitment. There is low level of uh, support and contribution. And uh, these are cases where maybe if it's an organization, people are very conscious of their time. If I'm supposed to start working at eight, I'll be there at eight. And uh, if I'm supposed to leave by five, probably by 4.30, people are getting on their, uh, they are putting up uh, their, taking care of their items, they are preparing. They, they, they are walking here, they are putting on their shoes by four, maybe 4.50, the, the table is clear by 4.55, just warming up, warming up. By 5 p.m., it's like there is a rush. Everybody is off. The car park is, is empty. People have disappeared. Because this environment is not, we are not here willingly. We, 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 we feel we have, we are here because we have to be here, because we have a positional leader. Okay, then we move on to permission leadership, permission level of leadership. And this at this level, we are talking about relationships. Keyword here is relationships. And people follow because they want to. They want to. These are people that we live and extend. We don't have to live at five. Why don't we live at six? There's still some work to be done. And they feel they belong. They feel they belong. So permission, it's about relationships. People stay in this organization. They work in this organization. They work together with this leader because they want to. There is a relationship. There's high productivity in those organizations. There is high sustainability, there is high commitment, there is also high support. Then we move to the third level of leadership, the production level of leadership. And the key word here is results. People follow this leader because of what the leader has done for the organization. These are result oriented. The leader has impacted the organization. The leader has transformed the organization. Maybe the organization was performing at a lower level, and it's now able to perform at a higher level, production level of leadership. So a leader at this level is uh, impactful, is results oriented, and is able to make significant impact uh, in terms of transforming the organization and transforming uh, the people and the community. Then we have the level four, where we are talking about people development. The key word here is reproduction. People follow this leader because of what the leader has done for them. These are leader that has mentored. These are leader that has produced him or herself through other people. These are leader that has uh, invested in relationships with people. A leader that has created a platform where people are able to explore what they have, develop it, exploit it, maximize it, and deploy it for the benefit of, uh, of other people. So people development, reproduction, a leader that has reproduced him or herself by mentoring other, other leaders, mentoring other people, pouring his, his or her heart. We normally say that if we want to impress people, talk about your success. But if you want to impact people, talk about your hidden moments, those times that you are giving up. Remember I talked about our cohort one, where we had three participants, 
two of them dropped out and then one remained and the one graduated. Those were the hidden moments. And I'm sure those are the moments that can really make a pioneer feel like I, I, I shouldn't give up. I need to hang on on that testimony. If they made it and they're now able to equip more leaders, then we can also be able to make it. So our hidden moments become stories uh, of transformation. Then we have the highest level, according to John C. Maxwell, of leadership, which is the pinnacle level of leadership. And I think this is what we, we, we all aspire for, where people uh, follow us because of who we are and what we represent. Key word here is respect. People respect this leader or these leaders. They follow this leader because of who they are and what they represent. These are leaders that we respect them for their contribution. We respect them for their character. We respect them for their lifestyle and also for their sacrifice. For their sacrifice. I think we have been using some common examples in this uh, masterclass. Talked uh, about. Uh, someone like Nelson Mandela, people respect, respected that leader globally. Talked about people like uh, Mother Teresa. Talked about uh, Martin Luther. And I'm sure there are many other leaders we can mention from our countries, from our organizations. Leaders that when they step in, we feel, we feel that we owe them respect because of the kind of life they lived and the sacrifice, the level of sacrifice they offered to ensure that people live a decent life. So the pinnacle level of, of, uh, level of leadership is really what we aspire as global leaders, where we, 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 people, we feel that uh, our contribution has been significant, our impact has been significant, until people feel they have to respro reciprocate by respect. They feel they have to reciprocate by, by following, by eagerly, uh, by by uh, uh, by by just uh, even learning from from the kind of leadership that we've been able to offer. So leaders, uh, this will be the parting shot for today. Uh, let's think through these levels of leadership. See where we are. See how do we scale up. If I am at a position level of leadership where people are I'm leading by rights. People are following me because they have to. I need to think, how do I graduate to permission level leadership? Why well, I focus more on building relationships, relationships that are meaningful and impactful. Then people get into, uh, people for, start following me, uh, or working with me in a willing, uh, in a willing, uh, uh, through, a, through their, their own uh, willingness. And then I can move on to production where I enhance my results in terms of the impact uh, within that organization. Then people development, mentoring more, equipping other people more, creating space where people can discover, develop and deploy themselves. And then pinnacle level where we sacrifice and lead uh, for a cause for the impact of uh, the people and for the glory of God. Uh, last slide here, uh, Robin Sharma, the author of uh, this book, titled The Leader Who Had No Title, he says that winning in these times of revolutionary change demands revolutionary leadership model. And what is this revolutionary leadership model? Creating an environment and a culture where everyone needs to show leadership. Yeah, these are times that we need to uh, let people know that we are not, we don't have some leaders separate somewhere, but we all have a role to play leadership is a, is a, we all have the functions, we all have the positions where we step up to lead. And therefore leadership is everyone's business. Uh, so everyone needs to show leadership. Everyone, everyone drives innovation. People become more innovative. And then everyone inspires teammates. Everyone embraces change. Change does not become our enemy, but it becomes part and parcel of us. It becomes a learning experience. Everyone takes responsibility for results. Everyone leads through positive thinking and everyone devotes to expressing their absolute best, giving our best. Remember that quote that we read of Martin Luther King, here lived a great street sweeper. 
who did his work well. This revolutionary times, he are saying that everyone can be a self-leader to lead self and also to lead others and make significant change and significant impact within our leadership spaces. So leaders, that brings us to the end of uh, this discussion. Uh, we'll take some time just to think through self-leadership again through the weekly self-evaluation, uh, which I'll share on the link. And uh, just want to appreciate you uh, for uh, being here tonight and uh, just uh, continuing with this journey together. So I know there's quite a lot that we have shared and uh, maybe as we, it's fair enough as we bring this discussion to a close, uh, probably just to allow us to reflect together. Uh, sometimes even when we share our parting shot, it also becomes part of enhancing what we have learned. So uh, I will just uh, allow each person a minute just to reflect on what we have learned. Uh, and as we reflect, uh, we'll also be uh, uh, sharpening each other through our reflection. And then that will be uh, the end of our discussions tonight. So allow me just to uh, probably guide the, how we'll flow through this. And I'll want to invite first Josephine. Josephine is in cohort 24. Uh, she has been participating in other cohorts. So I encouraged her and I requested her just also to join us tonight uh, so that we can continue uh, learning together. So I'll invite Josephine, Josephine to share uh, your comments as we conclude. Then I'll move on to Ross. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I believe this is something it has become very interesting part of me, the leader, becoming a global leader. I didn't know what to expect when we were starting because I never thought leadership is taught. Uh, I thought uh, in, the, in the first theory, one of the theories that you are born a leader. Mm -hmm. And now after there are so many things that need to be learned in leadership and uh, that the leadership within me can be brought out by the the urge to become at the pinna to go at the pinnacle or to become a global leader. Uh, I did appreciate even the joining different classes because it's making it even easier for me. And uh, the explanations are even better. I've tried to follow the YouTube, but I think when I listen uh, to class, uh, that is it becomes better for me because I can question. Like today, uh, what I would say. This one that we have uh, learned at the end, eh? there's two things that I have gone with that uh, will never escape my mind. The first one is the challenge that you had in starting. And I imagine how many of us have lost it because of, uh, as we say, dying heart. Eh? <laughs> because you, you, die, you, are, you, are, you get discouraged at the beginning and you start in, even uh, those of us who are Christians, you start imagining that even it is not your calling, it's not God's will. And yet it's just a challenge in the taking off. So uh, one thing I've learned about that is uh, how I can stay, still stay put, even in businesses, even in businesses. That's something I've learned of how you remain and you are teaching the one student who happened to your wife, how did you even come out of that? How did you even market it again? until it has reached so many of us who have never met you. And we don't know more you more than the number, the name Joseph Kiari. So that was quite encouraging. And I know that you are going to reach many, many more, uh, many more just like that. Just like Mother Teresa says, he's touching to feed by the one that he got. This last slide of the, uh, the kind of leadership, the, I mean, the, the, the faces, uh, the steps, where we have the position leader and then all the way to pinnacle. Though it's not in the book, but uh, it has really challenged me because uh, as a leader, I think there are days you go up to, from position to one, two, three, that step, and then you find yourself going back to position where people are only respecting you because of the position, because you are the manager. And I thought that is a very dangerous position to be in. It is important that when people start respecting you as a pos in position, 
because of the rights that you have, it is important that you move with them to the next step so that you can grow with them. And therefore you can move from that position because it's a dangerous uh, position. I think uh, even in businesses, uh, those who are in businesses like me, we, have, we can say that when you are when you're employees or the people who are working under you, they respect you because of your position. You can be sure they'll be on Facebook. These people will use their, whatever you have, they will use them uh, badly when they know you're not coming to the office. What, what will keep them going? So I think the position, uh, when we start realizing that people are respecting us out of position is a very dangerous position to be in because it is better when they can challenge us. Uh, maybe I would just share one thing of what um, I felt I, I could share this, uh, of what, have, what has happened with my leadership since we started learning. As I said, I thought leaders are born and I never thought about being trained to be a leader. But when we, we, we have learned about the different ways and the different styles of leaderships and leaders versus managers, I came to realize something that the best thing is to start appreciating what others are made of, that even others we are leading are leaders. And sometimes they end up being better leaders than we are. They have certain giftings in them that uh, they can be used to either as a manager or as a leader. And uh, in our family, we have a very big family and uh, we have been having some group work where when you have a problem, you come out and we, we do a, a fundraiser for you and we give. And I realized only five, six of us were giving. And the reason the five, six of us were giving is because the other people are there, but they don't really understand what it is that we are talking about. So I decided to have a, a meeting for family. I was not one of the leaders that were elected, but I, when after this one, after I started this class, I realized Kumbe, I can still lead that family. So I organized a gathering at home last week, actually last Sunday, uh, we had a meeting, our uncles, very old uncles, even those ones who are like 70s and 80s, they came, the young ones, the youth, the children, we came, we met, we met in the family. And uh, how would we start off? The only thing that I had, I had uh, some clear visions and goals that I want to achieve. So when I tell them a statement like, I want us to be giving to first to register ourselves, you know how many we are. And then, then we, they come out, every family comes out and says, we are this number, we are this number. We are looking at a family of my great grandfather. So they are uncles or uh, cousins to my mom, whom I don't know, and they were there. And I, at the end of the day, we were able to check when we were choosing leaders, I decided to use different kind of leadership from what we know. You know, in our, in our uh, social life, we use chairman, vice chair, treasurer, and secretary. I decided we, I want to use a, a contrary different way so that people will not think of this as a chairman like any other. So I told them we need to have a president, a deputy president, and ministers. And uh, we elected, I told them ministers, we come from families. And these are the ministers who will be representing the families. You see now they are not able to relate with any other area. The only one that we carried on was a secretary and a treasurer. But the other names, we gave them different names. And I can assure you, uh, immediately after that, we realized one of my cousins to my mom who have been sick. And we said, we are going to contribute. Let me tell you, the people who are elected the ministers, they have actually done that work so well that even when I'm here, I'm now thinking, Kumbe, these people have uh, different uh, ways. So when they wanted to elect me a president, because of course, when you say there's a president, people want you to be a president. I told them, no, 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 don't elect me as a president because I want a higher position than that. So they, I told them, no, 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 me, I'm international. So don't choose me as a president. So we chose other people as president, deputy. And then I told them I'm the organizing secretary. Then um, what I want to say is this leadership training that we have has really helped me a lot. But the only thing that I still feel there is a lot to do. If I have to become a, a good leader, I must have self-awareness. I'm still working on myself. I'm still working on myself. So, so much to say, but it's because I've really learned and I really love this class. And uh, that's why I keep on co uh, connecting to different groups that are learning. 
I believe as a learner, I have to be taught several times for the idea to come into my mind. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Wow, thank you so much, uh, Josephine. And even that uh, new approach, I think that's part of creativity. Yeah, people feel uh, uh, esteemed by coming up with that model where we have a president, a deputy president, and ministers in a family, uh, in a family setup. Uh, that's really uh, unique and also a creative way of uh, letting people appreciate and uh, take responsibility. Thank you. I'll move on to Rose and then Monica. All right. Well, I uh, just want to thank Josephine for sharing that information. Uh, sharing your story is also powerful and empowering to us. So thank you for sharing that as a cohort, former, you know, 2024. 20, so you have a few cohorts ahead of us. And we like the outcome. And we're looking forward to having that experience as well. And with this, I am learning a lot. And one of the things that I could say is the, um, the demonstration that you gave on the flight and businesses, you know, how businesses take off, how they go through friction time, a hard time, uh, whether it's finances or just getting customers or getting people to register to the program like you experience. It's, it's good to see that as a manager or as a future leader, not a manager, because I don't want to be a manager. I want to be an excellent leader. So it's good to see uh, or hear of a commerce, like how you have gone through what you went through in your business and you have been able now to be teaching cohort 26. So cohort one, did not you didn't give up. Uh, you wouldn't have all this other cohorts, but you continued with it. So that's leadership style. So I want to um, just speak about one thing that I was um, listening to last yesterday or yesterday was Miles Monroe. He was preaching in uh, Nigeria. And I, I really didn't, ex didn't, didn't put that video on. I had put a video on about prayer, but you know how the video finishes and another one comes up. So this one came up. He was teaching them about being a lion. And as, as I listened to that, he, he talked about leadership, something that I didn't expect to come up. And I saw that everything we had been learning the first few weeks, he just, he, I mean, he just went over stuff like that. He went over the same materials, teaching the church how to be, how everybody can be a leader. And he said, God put the potential in all of us. It's just a matter of now developing the attitude of a lion. And he was really funny saying that a lion can see an elephant and an elephant is five times bigger or more and can crush the lion. But the attitude in a lion is, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make it. I'm going to have lunch. Whatever, how big you are or whoever it is, the challenges are there but I'm going to overcome every challenge. So now we are all learning how to become leaders and, and learn how not to be um, the managers that discourage people where they just work, you know, because they have to. But we are also getting the skills on how to develop our own uh, leadership so we can be a success in many areas. So I'm looking forward to doing exactly that for my business. I am a nutritionist and um, of, an author of a nutrition book. And with that, I have tried to do some classes in a business that I have here in the, in the state of Maryland. And the way it went, is like I would do a class like, like we're doing now, classes. And the first, the first few classes, were free so that people can get to know the business. And I can tell you, when I started the payment once, <laughs> I ended up in the friction zone. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm going to keep going and keep pushing and I'm learning more skills and I intend to continue and make it better. I am going to have a classes called uh, Food as Medicine. And it will, you, hopefully it will also be in Kenya one day. 
All right, thank you so much. Wow, thank you so much. I think uh, this mm -hmm. discussion is very timely. Yes. Yeah, I know uh, all of us can relate uh, depending with where you are. Uh, actually, I didn't mention I had uh, a free class for one whole year where I could just train people, take them somewhere, uh, mm -hmm. book the venue, pay tea, 10 o'clock, lunch, just trying to uh, test if they, uh, they, they, they appreciate this. And uh, even with that, we still had people dropping. And I was like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> I've given these people free lunch. Um, free space, free, but some of them started uh, actually contributing when they felt I was doing everything. They said, no, 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 we mm -hmm. cannot allow this. We, you cannot call us here, pay lunch, yeah. pay a tea and pay the venue and and uh, we are leaders. And then I said, uh -huh. now, now it's working because as a leader, you need uh -huh. to take initiative. <laughs> oh, thank you for sharing that because I was, uh also discouraged because I was renting a place which is not cheap renting an office mm. and doing all that to prepare to do the presentations and teach so yeah it's good to hear so yeah. that I know I'll still uh, you know it's coming up yeah yeah. It's yeah. Up. yeah 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 actually after at a certain level it was just one one leader he called the others in my absence and he told them no leaders this cannot happen yeah we cannot have someone uh, training us, uh, yeah. booking the venue, uh, preparing tea, preparing lunch, and yet we are leaders. So the mm -hmm. next meeting, when we came for the next meeting, they told me, no, we are not paying for the venue. We are paying. We are contributing money for lunch and money for for, for, for the 10 o'clock tea. So from that time, they, 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 they now took over. Uh, but it was a journey, as we said, a journey. Mm -hmm. And also, mm -hmm. I think people appreciating the value is like one of them told them, we are getting this training for free today. In the future, people will have to pay for these trainings. All right. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I think slowly by slowly, uh, it was also part of, it really helped me to start getting the different perspectives to, not, to nurture the content, to nourish the content, restructure the content, because I will listen to them a lot, as much as I was training them. So I'll listen to the different perspectives, uh, see what I need to adjust in the content before we could get to get to the uh, to the public. So it was a really good opportunity also to uh, to reflect and also get uh, feedback. Mm, thank you. Thank yeah, you. For yeah, sharing. yeah, yeah. So the spirit of our pioneer, uh, and I'm sure all this this is what we. We are all here for uh, just to share our experiences and encourage each other. Mm -hmm. Good. So, uh, Monica, how is how are you, Monica, and how is Malaysia? Uh, I can say uh, good evening from Malaysia. Mm -hmm. We are doing well here. Uh, actually, I just came. I thought even you were finished, but I thank God that I tried to join. Actually, the other times I've never followed to know how many hours we normally take. Mm -hmm. But now I we are followed and I, I am aware of the hours we normally take. I want to say thank you for where I joined. I just found uh, where you were talking about, uh, I just saw on the screen self-awareness, self-confidence. And then it sent me, uh, it reminded me of today's uh, sermon, because here we are in the month of missions. And the pastor who was preaching is one of uh, those people who are learned, actually someone you can tap a lot of uh, understanding and wisdom from and uh, he was uh, teaching and uh, encouraging people to understand that uh, we have missions at our doorsteps that one just was an eye opener because when we talk about the missions is uh, something you talk like uh, there's a a clan may be far away from your village or another county or another uh, countries, someone is sent there to go and uh, preach the word of God. 
And at least now what I wanted to connect with, uh, there is something he said and I was really encouraged because he talked something positive about our continent, that is Africa. He said he once went to South Africa and uh, he was really amazed to go to a toilet. And when he was entering, someone who was cleaning, was doing the cleaning job, he told him, welcome to my office. And uh, he was really amazed and asked himself, if Africans can have a positive uh, attitude like this and have confidence in what they are doing, why can't others like here in Malaysia adopt the same attitude? And I felt so much encouraged and then I told myself, these classes we are taking here, they, we are learning a lot because at the beginning, actually maybe like me, I was feeling like, um, I don't know where to start. I have a lot, but I don't know where to start. But I felt uh, I came now as we move on, I've come to realize it just from within myself, that self, within myself, such the self-awareness, just that doorstep of myself, that family I interact with, the family I have, and the uh, the outside there, the place of work, those I interact with, even the place of worship, those are now the, the people I can start with. First, I have to start with myself because we have gone through and we have seen all the levels. It is just from within myself. I have to start my, with myself and then I set the foundation as the takeoff of the flight which we have seen. So I got so much encouraged and then now I linked it up with the leadership classes we are taking. And this is giving me encouragement to just to be uh, patient with the time and I will be able now to know where to start. Because I was also looking at these levels of leadership and I was asking myself, where do I belong here? Actually, I do not want to be at the positioning level. But uh, I also <laughs> get to myself and I say, but now I cannot go beyond number two and the three. So those are the, 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 the questions which keep on coming and coming up. And once they, they, we, get the, uh, we, we get an opening and we come to understand, actually now we'll be able to move and even now start off and maybe at the takeoff. So I'm looking forward to getting to this level of takeoff. And because of the pioneers, Josephine, thank you very much, and the Rose, and the, uh, each one of the other members and our facilitators, I'm so much getting encouraged. Actually, today I felt, what am I going to do now? I got assignment, I have to go. I know I have missed the first bit, but I've not missed everything. Actually, when you attend, uh, it is better than when you follow in the in the in the recorded one because when like me people are different me i understand when i see whoever is talking so people are also different so i thank god that i managed to join and i'm so much encouraged and i so much uh, wait to get more and more and maybe also i'll get an opportunity whereby I can also impact to others. And that is the level I will be now at the starting point and also at the takeoff point. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Monica. And uh, thank you for sharing your uh, reflection. Yeah, as we said, it's a journey. And uh, along the journey, I'm sure wherever we are, all of us is a certain level of impact we, we, we are having. So it's about just continuing to grow that level of impact uh, strategically, intentionally, purposefully, uh, and also probably sometimes seeing uh, where we need to establish better structures. Uh, because that now that is now the, the aspect of um, where we think about the continuity uh, and also we think in terms of growing uh global and that also means we need to think about structures as well so we appreciate that let's continue thinking through and that self-interrogation is uh very very important uh in our discussions so i'll finally want to also invite uh, pastor leonard uh it was a pleasure i was able to meet pastor leonard uh, in nairobi and we really had a good time really shared a lot 
and uh, therefore this is someone now that I can relate with uh, at a close range. Uh, Pastor, it's good to see you, and I just want to invite you to say hello to us and uh, maybe share your reflection as well. Yeah, thank you very much, Joseph. Um, and Sora have been away for quite some time, but I managed uh, today to join you at the late hour. Yeah, but uh, even if it was at the tail end, I am able to pick some, some of these uh, lessons that are coming out uh, from this session. And uh, it was really good to meet face to face in Nairobi. Mm. Uh, we, we got to know each other by face mm. at, uh, at a close pro proximity. Yeah, it was really good. Um, also, I, I, I want to appreciate uh, the lessons that have uh, uh, emanated from this discussion. Uh, I, I found you uh, talking uh, about the levels, the levels of leadership. Uh, it's not the first time I'm interacting with it, but uh, uh, today I have added uh, a uh, few elements uh, to my understanding. Uh, I, I see the, uh, a very important element, for example, uh, of making us move from one uh, level to another, the element of learning, uh, the element of learning. Uh, if we keep learning and understand uh, uh, get knowledge on uh, a number of things, then uh, our, leader, our leadership, leadership skills, growth, yeah, so that is, that is very important. And uh, I, also, I also picked uh, your testimony, the way you started doing everything uh, by yourself, uh, but because of the content that we are delivering, uh, uh, people uh, started to, to join you in the journey. So I think uh, the lesson that I picked there is uh, uh, to move from level one to level two, uh, there is that element of adding value to the people you are saving. <laughs> So it is not about the title only, but when uh, people see value on what uh, they are getting from uh, whatever you are doing, I think that is where now you, you, you cease to, 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 to be just a position reader. <laughs> you cease to be just uh, because you are a pastor, you, uh, and uh, you are the one uh, leading. So, they, they, they relate, they see value in you, and then uh, now they respect you. So I think the, uh, the important thing as leaders, what we are learning is that uh, whatever we are doing and whatever we are leading, we have to make sure that we are adding value. Yeah, so there is something different when people uh, get in contact with us, when people uh, attend our sessions or our services, uh, there is value which is generated out of that. I think that uh, moves us uh, automatically to a certain level. So I think that is very, very important. But I also picked it from, uh, I think, uh, I'm not sure whether it was Monica or Rose, uh, I think Rose, uh, who talked about uh, uh, the family, uh, the family leadership titles that they gave each other? <laughs> I also, I, I also picked something for <laughs> when he, when he, you are called a president. I think there is a, <laughs> a certain responsible responsibility uh, <laughs> is being put on your shoulder. You know, when you are called as a minister. So I think there is also something to learn out of it. Yeah, we don't uh, just call each other these uh, simple, simple names. Uh, other, uh, 
if we want to, to, to make people be responsible, let us give them proper titles, you know, <laughs> and then uh, people uh, will be driven to demonstrate, uh, to demonstrate their title. So I think that is that is that was uh, also, also my uh, an eye opener uh, in in my in um, in my leadership career. So uh, thank you very much for these uh, good uh, lessons. Uh, I have seen a, a question from uh, uh, from uh, from Pastor Abel, uh, which is uh, talking about. Uh, uh, when he, when you are asked and you do not have you do not have an answer at that point what do you do as a leader yeah yeah what, what i wanted to contribute in in, in that uh, area is that uh, you know leaders we have experience we have experiences and we have uh, insti instincts you know, <laughs> so when when you have a question in front of you, I think if you get uh, you, 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 you try to tap into your inner inner voice, you know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, for example, I, I know um, even if you are you are learned for us, we have uh, this uh, degree. Uh, first degree, second degrees, but when you go to your daddy <laughs> explaining your challenge, even if he is not lending, but the, the, the instinct, the instinct that they have, they are able to give you, to share you uh, something, uh, a, something that will, will, will give you a revelation on how to handle the matters. So I think as leaders, we need to, 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 to learn how to tap into these inner voices, the, incident, the, the instincts that we have, because uh, uh, they will be able to lead us uh, uh, to advise or counsel uh, people uh, because uh, uh, yeah, there is, there is, there is, there is that uh, element that we need to 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 know how to use it uh, in your leadership. So even if we don't have answers, if we listen to the inner voice, yeah, you will get some direction, some sense of direction. You might you might not give an uh, a direct a direct uh, solution, but uh, tapping from the 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 the, the internal voice uh, and uh, and and speak from that angle, you you will be able to provide some some sense of direction that uh, can be can be helpful to your people. Yeah, so I think those are the elements that I wanted to uh, to to share in in these uh, closing remarks. Thank you very much. I believe we will continue learning, mm -hmm. and we are we are we continue striving to uh, to join on time. I know there are a lot of challenges that we uh, each each one of us we, uh, we are facing. Yeah. So, but uh, let's keep moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We will we will make use both of the. The platform, the recorded one, but also the live. Whenever time, whatever time we have, uh, we will be joining. So bear with us and uh, please understand us because uh, yeah, life must go on. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Pastor Leonard. Uh, it's a pleasure. I uh, like the example you've given where you consult your father, you may not have all those degrees, but he'll be able to give you counsel. That's uh, really powerful and I appreciate that. It's part of wisdom, experience. Yeah, so leaders, uh, I think I'll request uh, because of our time, uh, this question by from Pastor Abel, if I can just share a comment on the WhatsApp group because I had uh, some challenge, uh, uh, network challenges. Uh, sometimes he's joining us from uh, rural places uh, in Zimbabwe and the network is not very stable because 
is overseeing so many churches. So uh, just request, uh, including what uh, uh, Pastor Leonard uh, you have shared, you can just put a few words on our WhatsApp group. I think it will also be uh, it will also help him. He has posted the question on the WhatsApp group for Court Twenty Six. Uh, so just feel free to make a comment there, and I'm sure. Uh, it will it uh, it will uh, it will uh, help him. You know, I always remember the story of Moses when he took up that duty. A lot of things were not clear, but Moses knew how to continue consulting the owner. He knew this is not my role; this is uh, someone's job, and therefore, if I get to a standstill, I just need to get a, at a corner, separate myself from the people, and ask, uh, "What do I do here? What do I do here?" And I think I also say. Sometimes the role of a leader is to create an environment where people will offer solutions, uh, not all from you, but an environment where people feel like uh, we can offer solution. I remember the story of Jesus when he was feeding the 5,000. Uh, I normally say the bread was not with Jesus and the fish, it was within the people. But we need a leader who would help people see what we have and how can we optimize what we have. So sometimes we create that environment where people can also start looking at, maybe we have, they have the solution. Uh, they only require a leader to just to coordinate and uh, create an environment where people can explore what they have and uh, be able to offer a solution. And that's the thinking we'll uh, want to trigger from next week as we start talking about the project proposal, what issues are there in society and do we feel like probably have the capacity to offer some solution. That is what we'll start discussing. Uh, from next week. Otherwise, leaders, I really want to appreciate. I know we have extended, uh, but I think I've really liked the discussion. I'm sure all of us have picked something uh, that uh, will help us. Uh, uh, if we were taking off and there were some uh, clouds, there were some uh, turbulent, I'm sure now we have a, a clear focus on how to move up uh, so that we can start cruising and uh, having a lot of impact. Uh, depending with where you are, we know what to do and how to move on from that stage uh, to the other one. So I want to pause there. Josephine, thank you so much for that idea. Uh, I think even for Global, global Leadership Network, we rebrand and have the global president and global ministers. That was really good insight and uh, it's something that we reflect on. Uh, from now henceforth, we really appreciate. So I want to bring this to a close. Uh, unless there is uh, any pending comment, question. Okay, if there is none, I'll just request that we unmute and share the words of Chris uh, as, as we conclude for, uh, for today. Okay, so the Chris. Of uh, our Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ uh, and the and, Lord God and, and the Lord of the Holy Spirit with be us now and, and forever. forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, Rose, have a good day. Uh, Monica, have a blessed night. Yeah. Uh, have a blessed remaining hours of the day and a boros good day. Oh, thank you guys. Have a wonderful uh, evening as well. Uh, yesterday, we had also a ladies fellowship where we are having the topic of uh, health care, spiritual 